Okay, I'm going to go over this projectile motion problem uh, just to make sure that hopefully you had a chance to work on it, but I don't want to leave you behind. Um, if you want to still work on it, work on it, but I'm just going to go over it anyway. Uh, so this is the way it should start off. Uh, if I run it, the ball just goes up and straight back down, and everyone's happy. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is launch it at an angle. So down here, I have a 30-degree angle. Now, down here in this line, I have the initial velocity. So I need the x velocity and the y velocity right there. So I'm just going to type this as v0 times cosine theta and then comma v0 times sine theta. You could actually calculate the component values and put them in there, but this way all I have to do is change. I can just change the initial velocity, I can change the initial angle, and they'll be done. So now I'm going to click run, and that's 30 degree angle. Uh, zoom out a little bit just so you can see where it landed. It actually missed the ground, but the ground's not real anyway. And then here it prints out the final time. Uh, I could print out, let's do this, print ball.pos. Actually, let me do it like this. The final position equals comma ball.pos comma, just to be clear, meters. Okay, and then I'll do this one too. Might as well. Time of flight equals T seconds. Okay, now I'll run it again. And it prints out the time it took. And this is the X coordinate and this is the Y coordinate. You see that's actually a little bit below zero because I ran this as long as it's greater than or equal to zero. So it got at zero, it ran it one more time, and that's close to zero. So we're pretty okay with that. Uh, if I change the angle, let's go up here and change this to a 40 degree angle. It was 6.7 meters, now it's 8.2 meters, so you see it went further. You can keep changing this and see what angle gets the furthest. Um, you probably have already looked at in lecture class, 45 degree angle is the greatest, but you should play with that and try it. Okay, play it around. You could change the initial velocity, or you could just change that number. Okay. So, what about this? This is what we did in class. What if I go up here to the ball and say I launch it off the table that's 1.2 meters high? Now you see the ball starts up here. Actually, let's change this velocity to 3.5. That's something more like you did in lab. There you go. So that's the final position. Oh, and all these, notice I started from negative 4.5. That's just because it fit on this ground better, but you could change that. So it went from negative 4.5 to negative 1, so it went about 3 meters. Uh, but you can get that value from this, and I could change the angle. I could do all sorts of cool things. So you can redo, and I can rotate around. You can redo that lab and, and check your calculations this way. Okay, one more thing. Let's go up here. F1 equals G curve. I've been using series, but I was told that was wrong. I'll just leave it like that. I want to plot the... Uh, y position as a function of time. So I make that graph. Down here, I'm going to say uh, f1.plot t ball.pos.y. I have to say which component of the ball's position I plot. I can't plot a vector. But this will plot t on the horizontal axis and the ball's position on the y. And then you can see the graph down here. Right there. Oops. Sorry. Right there. So that's the that's not the trajectory because this is time, not the uh, this is time, not position. But you could plot ball.pos.x versus ball.pos.y. You could plot the velocity. You could plot anything. Okay, so that's your program right there, and hopefully that helps you with some of these things.